Morning, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, all this stuff. Time to break something this morning. I've been in my shop, cleaned it up a little bit this morning. Uh, kind of cool out there for me. It's like it's about 30 degrees outside. And I don't really feel like going out there messing around, but it's a beautiful sunlit day. I'm going to get out there shortly. But in the meantime, I've got this Delmonico, no, you know, no surprise, that I want to see if I can uh, take the tone control out and uh, see if I can repair it. So, got the radio here. I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to bother with all the gory details of taking it out, but I'm going to take the tone control out and uh, get it on the bench, get the camera set up where we see what we're doing, see if we can take it apart without destroying it, and see if we can get get the two pieces apart. That's where the trouble lays. Getting them apart, you know, taking it out, no problem, is taking the two halves apart without destroying it. But I knew how the other one went, so I'm going to try this one. So I'll back in a few minutes, as soon as I have these hiccups out of the way. Every time I get on the camera, I get the hiccups. Anyway, I'm going to shut it down for a minute, pause you, uh, take the tongue control out, and uh, put it on the bench, get this radio out of the way, and let's see if we can overhaul it. All right? Now, that's assuming it's a one meg. Uh, I'll have to look at that. But uh, And if it isn't uh, what I have on hand, then their video will be delayed. Anyway, back in a minute. All right. Here we are. We're back. One stereo tone control. Yeehaw. There it is right there. Two gang uh, control with the switch. The switch is the on off switch of the radio. So You a little closer here. You know, typical potentiometer. Here's your center wiper. Here's the outside edges of the control. Same thing here. Now this one here, if you can see it, I broke it. It just really just snapped off. So anyway, and then there's the uh, power uh, power switch right there. No big deal. So get you closer so I can see what I'm doing here so what we got to do with this I've learned my lesson on the last one this little band right here that goes around let's see get you in there there's a band right here that goes around and stops here and go does the same thing here you'll notice that there's a little bend tab right there same thing on the other side another bend tab well basically what you have to do very very carefully bend this back bend it back you don't want to bend it too much it will break ask me how I know I broke it on the other one uh, you can't bend them too much once you bend them leave them alone you probably have one bend out of them before they break anyway um, what we want to do is we're going to take these two loose right here take this one loose take this one loose see if this back cover will come off it then will take this nut off right here and that should pull this apart and then once we get to that then we should be in the internals of the switch so um, not sure how I want to compose this shot so I guess we'll just do it this way we'll just zoom me in on the bench try not to get too much where's this thing at there it is We'll try to work in any enclosed space here. So, first step, taking these two halves apart. I'm just going to take my little brand new wire cutters. I'm going to very, 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 very gently pull that arm back. I mean, I shouldn't have to explain this in too much detail. 
if you don't understand what I'm doing at this point you honestly don't need to be working on radios but just for clarity Ooh, we got it zoomed in too much there we go if you can see that see I straighten that tab out I mean it's kinda it's kinda obvious okay I don't know probably shouldn't say nothing but anyway got that tab off Let's get you back in frame where you at let's get this one done my in frame my big old fat hands in the way there we go just lifting it back trying not to push it if you push this metal too fast that's what makes it break you got to give it time to re to adjust itself internally that's a little bit of metal 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 cool oh my gosh that's a word I don't say very often. Huh. Metallurgical? Is that a word? A little bit of physics behind uh, metalworking. I can't think of the name of it. So now I'm going to try to pry this ear off. Remember, I'm not trying to force it. You're still in the frame, yeah. Just very gently. I'm trying not to bend these at tabs that I just rolled back. Okay, I got that one done. Now flipping it over. Will this work better? Let's see. I think my camera's on the wrong side. I guess this is good. Alright, this one's easier. Alright, I got that done. Now the two halves are separated as you can see. I'm get my little cherry pickers here. These two halves are separated. Now, we've got to go into the front. Let's zoom you out a second so we can get a little adequate. Let's see what the heck we're doing here. Now if you see on the front here, the other thing that I have to do is I have to bend these tabs up right here. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one and as well let's take this nut off when I do that then this whole front assembly should come apart so let's find out uh, I think I had you guys zoomed in a little too much a few minutes ago just a second ago but let's not do that this time so I think what I'm going to do now is uh, just take the nut off and it's on there pretty good so just you can get a Be gentle with this stuff. Don't be like a. Don't be like a. Don't be like them ladies are all these people. Oh, look, that came right off. That came right off. Wow. Cool. Anyway. Take the nut off if you can see what the heck I'm doing. Ah, uh, sure. There we go. And we get it. Yes, man. I guess I should have measured this. I'll measure it when I get it out. I'm not sure this is audio taper or not. Really ain't sure. Nope, it's a one meg, so I have the controls. But like I said, I don't know if it's an audio taper or not. Okay, now that we got it loose, see it jiggling and wiggling around in there? That's the next phase. Next phase is we'll take these little tabs right here. Bend them up. Uh, it's the same thing as with these other tabs. You can be really delicate with them. Don't push them. Don't push them. Oh boy, there's that heater again. Thinking I'm getting too much heat on me. I'm getting the sniffles. Woke up not quite feeling too good today. A few years back when I didn't feel good today, I didn't really think much about it, but nowadays in the in the COVID era, you kind of scared of every little ache and pain that you have.
like I used to say, unless I'm bleeding through my nose or something like that, I'm not going to worry about it. Sniffles have been around forever. Alright, here comes the first element. There. What it looks like. Let me just set this aside. That's what it looks like internally. This is the wiper. Right, it's hard to see. You can see that little uh, right there if you can see it. Yeah, that is the wiper. It is connected to this ring if you can see it that goes around here. That little ring right there. That ring is isolated from this. Uh, that ring of the wiper is isolated from the threaded part of the controller or any of the outside metal of the controller. It's actually isolated. Uh, wouldn't be too good if this was the center wiper portion was grounded now, would it? Anyway, that ring of this I uh, just showed you contacts this little area right here, and which is connected to the center pin. That's your wiper connection. Here's the resistive element of the control. This is what uh, goes bad in you. And by the looks of it, this looks like an audio taper. But we're going to, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to put it on the bench now, measure to see what it actually is. This might actually be still good, but I, I don't know. Let's find out. Move you back here. Guess I could have done this before. Uh, where is my VTVM at? Hello, where is my VTVM? Not sure what I want to do here. Um, basically, I'm just going to measure it. You know what, for the sake of clarity, I'm going to zoom in on my digital meter. I just want to know, I really just want to know if this thing even checks good. Because it acts like it was completely open, which means it could just need a good cleaning. So we're going to set this on ohms, we're going to set this on 2000 kilo ohms, which is 2 meg. And I'm going to measure the control, I'm just going to go from one side to the other. Oh my gosh, what happened to my probe? Bent my probe. It's measuring 1300 ohms. Kind of wish now I'd have measured it in circuit. I really need to. So chalk that and up as a fail. I should have, before I took this apart, measured it. So I'm going to temporarily uh, reassemble it. It fell on my part. Yep. Overloaded. Overloaded my butt with my brain. Something like that. I'm just going to assemble one of them and I want to... Get a measurement to see what this thing is actually doing. I missed a complete step. Yep, missed an entire step. Yeah, I did. What a loser I am. Okay. Got it back together enough to test. Let me pause. Well, hell of it.
think all them heaters make the people sick. All right, we know the control measured at that one uh, 1.3 mega ohms, which is okay, I guess. It ain't completely open, so I am going to go zeroing out my meter so we can get as accurate as possible. You have to do this with VTVMs. Uh, I need to make this R times 10. Thousand. Let's do hundred thousand. I guess that'll work. You have to go back and forth with your leads disconnected, set it for infinite, and then uh, go back, ground it, or short them together. Set your zero and go back and forth till it scale tracks. Okay, here we go. All right, can you see the control? I've got one the leads across the center, one the center to one side that was grounded. That's the only side that we're worried about. So I've turned this control maximum away, uh, maximum should be maximum resistance right now, and we're getting about uh, 15 time on the 15 we're getting a lower 15 so I'm on the 100k scale so that should be a little over slightly less it's actually from 14 so it's reading about 14 uh, 14,000 kilo ohms or 1.4 uh, mega ohm and I'm turning the control down turning the control down you see the meter dropping it actually went to zero Wow, kind of glad I did this. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I don't see nothing wrong with that. And I'm on the 100 scale. It's about 110 ohm. Looks like it just needs a cleaning. Hmm. Let's see what this in here does, the other side. Oh yeah, it's bad. You see how the meter just goes infinite resistance. It's infinite resistance until it gets right there. So if we can get you guys in macro mode, I found the problem. I'm going to zoom you back out where this camera will focus and see if we can. I found the problem. Let's see. Pretty kind of hard to see. Yeah, let's see if we can get the light right. Hmm. Can't see the viewfinder. I can't do anything. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. Right there. Right there. That's a trend of trend. See it? If, if, I, it's hard to get this to show up on camera, but right there is a split. Is a split in that uh, contact material. This wiper is bad. I mean, this uh, resistive element is broke. That's why. That's why I had some of the trouble. Don't think I did that taking it apart. But it's nothing. Nothing's beyond the realm of possibility. So what do we do? Got one good one, one bad one. Figure story of my life. Should we change both controls or just that one? Hmm. But I think I know how to get these out. I 
and think about this a minute. This is the uh, control, as you can see. This is the wiper section right here for the uh, for the outside one, the broke uh, section. Uh, this is the wiper right here. If you can see it, that's the wiper. So as you turn the pot, as you see, the wiper is called wiper because as you can see, it wipes the resistive element. All right. You can see in there, very little, little right in that, right that there. That's your spring to your center contact that connects to this wiper. That's how you can turn it and adjust. Right here on top. See that? Let's get that little white glue on it right there. I'm going to take that little ring off. I believe that should come off. It should unscrew. And I'm going to take this part off. I'm going to take this wiper section off so it won't damage it. Then I'll put this back on and I'll use that to pry against this other piece right here. And I think it'll come out. So, be right back. Okay, I had to play with it. Didn't want to disappoint myself on camera. So, I'm not sure how I want to do this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to involve you guys a little more deeply than I did the last time. Get these test leads out of the way. I don't have my bench quite like I want it. I'm not 100% satisfied with it, how it is, how I run just in limited space. I have some of this equipment that I'm going to replace because it's just not handy to me. So, where were we? Zoom me in a little bit. Oops, sorry about the cuss word. Push the wrong button. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take this ring off right here. Take my time, Let's make sure you guys are in. I'm going to zoom in just, I don't want to get you too far, then I, I'd have to concentrate on keeping you guys in frame. Alright, there's the top, there's the ring. I'm just going to put it over here out of harm's way. And we'll see if I can get managed to persuade this top piece to come off, which I'm doing. All right, trying to pry it off. Trying to pry it off without damaging it. Because so I want this out of the way for the next step. Just being careful with it. It's built a little different than the other. It has me a little concerned. Still looks the same, but it looks like it's built just a little bit different. There. Well, this is going to be easier than I thought. This one was built nothing like the other one. See, I'm already at the point that I need to be. I think. <laughs> so I wonder if I want to just change this one. It is definitely broke. I'm not sure how that broke. I don't think I could have done that. Yeah, the other problem we have is right here. You see this little piece right here? If you swing this around, this is what holds this whole section together. It's like a little sandwich. And it's held in by this. It's press fit because the other one's press fitted. Um, so we have to figure out a way to get that out without damage breaking anything. That's that's one of the problems. So I think from here on I'm going to uh, don't really know how else to do this. I'm 
May as well stop while I ruminate about this. Okay. After uh, taking a break, catching up with myself, letting my brain get caught up. This piece right here, this is the back section right here. And remember, this this little aluminum piece right here is actually holding this. It's holding this little uh, uh what is that? I know that little piece of plastic right there. Holding that is sandwiching this plastic, this uh, front metal support, and the uh, contact or the uh, control uh, surface right here that has the uh, resistive element on it. Okay, that goes all the way through and it's it's swaying inside. This stupid camera and me fighting this morning. I don't know if you can see it or not, but if I can move it around, if you the inside of there is where. When they pushed this thing together, they swayed it. They had a little round something, that, little, you know, little bevel edges in it that they apparently punched or machine did it or whatever. I don't know. But it swayed the end of this aluminum, which pushed it, flared it out. And that's what holds all this stuff together. You notice I push on it, it don't come out. So we have to undo that. So what I have to do, and this is what I did on the other one, it's going to have to happen anyway. This uh, this is the wiper ring, uh, fingers right here for the for the center conductor on um, the center connection for the uh, for the wiper connection of the control is press fit or riveted into this. This is what we got to take off right here for the next step. So I got to drill this out, which means I got to go get my drill and I'm going to very carefully drill this out so I can have this whole thing intact and I'll show you why as we get along with this video so let me go get a drill, drill this out, you don't need to see that I don't think, drilling something out as long as you get the right size bit, take your time, you'll be fine so I'll be right back okay here we go operation don't destroy it I got me a wooden surface here to drill on, I'm just going to take this pot or this control Lay it down on something flat so I can have control of it. Find me something here just so I can have control of it. Alright, so what I'm going to have to do, guys, it's going to be a compromise on this video. Let's see here. Said I wasn't going to show you how to do it, but oh, what the hell. Entertainment, right? Now, if you can see that, this center uh, rivet right here, what I need to cut off or drill out. So I think I got the right size to drill. So just take your time. How are we doing here? Can y'all see? Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to drill it. Let's see. And step up a size and went right through it. Couldn't do that again if I wanted to. Yeah, it didn't damage it. Get another chance to damage it. Here we go, round two. I'm just gonna don't force it. Of course, I would pick the drill, sharpest drill bit I ever had right here. <laughs> well, go up to the next drill bit. Dang, I'm trying not to be too hoggish on this. Dead gum. This one or nothing. Ready? Here we go. I didn't have that much trouble on the last one. Make me get my Dremel out. There we go. Had to. There. That little dude right there, what I needed. You gotta be careful of that because this is gonna be your friend here shortly. Or should I say my friend? 
can be your friend you just have to send an email all right got that piece out and it's so damn zoomed in can't even see nothing looks like they're relying off of Star Trek doesn't it so now I've got this part open I had to get it off anyway but I need this part open completely because this section here where are you there you are that section there I needed this out of the way because what I intend to do is take this socket right here number 10 socket and I'm going to put on this side so I'll give this something to come out with in other words give it room to come out but support the center of this control without damaging it hopefully so put it there set it down for a minute reorganize you guys I'll tell you what I want to zoom that down a little bit alright let's see do that there we go alright now I need to find a socket that'll go in there as tight as possible basically you need I'm going to hit this that's too big that's really too big I don't want to hit it hard with anything because I don't want to flare the end out <sighs> that just caused me more heartache trying to find a, something that will go in here yeah that's almost right it was but needs to be a little bit bigger I think this is too big of course oh my gosh can y'all still see hmm. oh the hell with it Nothing venture, nothing gain. Here we go. I'm just going to... Beat the snot out of it. I did. That sucker's really in there. Not quite the results I was looking for. Uh, this is probably going to be another don't do as I do video. Of course, it don't matter about the center because of where it goes. It's nothing really in the way. So I'll probably leave it alone. Okay, I got to straighten this out. I've been at it just a little bit because of my impertinence. No, no problem there. Bend it just a little. There, good as new. Perfect. Okay, well, that's done. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Alright, let me find my parts. Here's the two old sections right here. This is the donor. This is an audio taper. Um, 24 millimeters, they call it. One meg. Audio taper, one meg. 24 mil. I'm just going to take it apart. And we will take it apart, which is no really a momentous thing. I ordered four of these the other day when I ordered the first one, and it's pretty much. I'm going to have to do a little, little adjusticating on it. Yeah, I said adjusticating. Yeah. If you want prim and proper English? I guess you're on the wrong channel. I don't make people people from Boston so now here's the next hurdle in this 
these controls are built a little more permanent. The center, I got to get this section out. This is that. I got to get this section out right here. This is the center wiper. That's that insulated wiper that we discussed a few minutes ago. But this one is pressed in. So what I got to do is I got to get something and pinch these sides here and get this, get these little swag sections here where they hit it. You see that little roundness right there where they hit some, hit it, uh, something round to spread these, uh, spread these. Uh, that uh, spread out these ears right here I guess you could call it so I got to get rid of that and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next let me get something that I can use to cut those off with right. you know I wish I had the room they put a big monitor up that I can look actually I do have room This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try to cut these ears off, get as much of that out of the way as possible. Yeah, I cut them off. You can see, it don't look like it, but I did. I'm going to take a socket. See, I'm going to get a socket. And these things, they put them in there. They don't want you to get them out. I'm just gonna put it on the bottom of the control like that right there, okay? To support that, okay? Put that there out of the way. I'm gonna get my little board stand right here. So I need a board to do this on. Okay. Alright, now kind of not in frame again. This is gonna be so much fun, especially if I tear it up. I need something to press that down with sharply. Sir, I need, uh, I really need them. Because I don't feel like going out to my workshop and getting a proper punch. I'm just going to use this little torch bit as a punch. It's a little 20. I'm just going to put on this, there goes that heater again. Just gonna put on the center like that right there. I'm just gonna give it a few wraps. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it a few more there. Yeah, we got progress there. It's getting there. Try not to damage the control itself. It's a tough little booger. This thing keeps going all over the damn place out of frame. It's just like wandering around like, hey man, what's going on? Yeah, we do it rough here. He's just about there. As long as I didn't damage that pot. Well, that little bastard's tough, I'll tell you right now. You don't want it coming out, my George. What's the old saying? Where there's a wheel, there's a way. This might be fraught with disaster. Yep. Believe me, this is going to work. <laughs> I'm wondering if I need a smaller. Ah, hell with it. Let me go get my punch out of the shop. All right, had to go get the big guns. Got me a couple of drift punches. Got this little dude here. This one here. This one's a little bit bigger. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to use this one here. Tell you one day, y'all can't see a freaking thing I'm doing. So I don't know. Let's put you over here. 
Can't see a thing I'm doing, neither can I. What's that look like? Well, it looks just fantastically bad. I need to do that, but that makes me right handed. And I'm not good at this stuff right handed. It really needs to be on my right side because that is completely blocking you guys. What about that? Yeah, I guess it kind of works. Yeah, we're just going to have to do it like, you know, that don't work either. The farther I get away, the changes the angle completely. That drift is crooked. All right, my step stone, step stone been using it. My stepson, I call my son actually. He's uh, he's about as gentle on tools as I am. Hey, I'm just going to hit it. You know what I'm about to do. Here we go. This is going to go for me. Should have done that in the first place. Remember, boys and girls, use the right tool for the job. Now yeah, then. One resistive element, brand new. That's what we're looking for. That's what we need. But we can't just stick that in there. A couple of reasons why. Let me find the pointer. I'm going to zoom you guys back out. There you go. I hate zooming in tight. Okay. Here is your outer uh, terminals of this control. You know, I think beating this horse to death, ain't know. Anyway, this uh, sad right here goes connects to this piece of this uh, resistive element that goes all the way around to this one. Okay, and now here's that big old wiper. See what it does? This is all made onto this. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's phenolic. Anyway, that is etched into this phenolic. What we have to do now, among other things, we have to take a Dremel and cut right there. Cut this trace right there. Cut all this with a Dremel. Just wipe it out because we don't need that connection. Because what we're going to do, where is it? That'll run over it, lose it, stomp it, mash it. You know me, I'm, I'm good at losing crap. We're going to take this. Where yeah, are you? There we go. I'm going to take that right there, which you remember we took off the old control. This is the wiper contact that continue, you know, takes the center pin and connects it to the wiper through the ring. So this has got to be put on here. Uh, and I'll solder it on here. And I'll show you that when we get to that part. But next thing I have to do, I have to take a Dremel and cut that trace. Now I'll get this big old screwdriver right here. We've got to cut this trace. We'll just go in there and just kind of hog it out a little bit so it won't be in the way because what I'm about to do next, this will be short in the ground because you remember this other piece that I took off wherever in the daylights it went. I'm going to take some massaging of this right here. This, got to, this piece right here has got to go through there so I'm going to have to take some material out of both sections for this to snap in there snug. So I'm going to do that. Um, it's going to be time consuming because the other thing that I have to do, going back to this a minute, is I'm going to have to take, I'm going to hog all this material out of the center, the center connection right here. Hog all that out with the Dremel and then I've got to hog out around the edges here and um, when I did this at work, where are you? When I did this at work, I used to, I actually drilled it out with some trail bits, and it was a very uh, scary thing, because you go in here with something this delicate, try to, you could damage this in so many thousands of ways. Uh, so, but I got to enlarge this enough. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enlarge that enough to get around the swag part right here, which means i got to hog some material out. 
Uh, so I'm going to fool with that. That's going to be a lot of it's going to be a lot of back and forth tedious stuff, and I don't feel like this is worth sharing as far as that goes. Uh, I just need it to go through there I, tight enough that when I get it done, I can go in there and with a little bitty small uh, pointed uh, punch and swag it on four corners of it. That way it'll expand it out and it'll hold it and everything will be super duper. So next time you see this, uh, the next video you'll see me at the after effect. I either broke the damn thing or I was successful. So back shortly. Okay. Taking a little time to get back from that last segment to this segment because another great video I missed out on but my uh, caliper broke wouldn't power up and this it's I've had this thing forever I've lost the cover she, well actually I got the cover I just think I gotta uh, it just it's broke it's hard to keep it on but anyway the other thing is is the holding lot the little lock here and I think I know where that is somehow or another I lost it I've had this thing I don't know 20 25 years anyway I had to fix that which meant I had to take it apart uh, drill some plastic out because the uh, battery contact the positive battery contact had broke loose from the circuit board however it's a molded plastic in there you can't get that nothing apart hardly but the tab that come off of the uh, cotton battery contact w went up inside that plastic you could see in there it just apparently just broke uh, come on soldered you know that Rojas stuff, R-O-H-S, Rojas, which is unleaded solder. Bullshit. Anyway, uh, I had to take and drill out that plastic very carefully, chip it out so I could have enough room to get my soldering iron in there, and I cleaned all the solder off of everything, you know, fluxed it up. That The contacts on that battery contact were corroded, so I had to use a little flux, a little green, uh, scotch bright stuff like that, clean it up enough where it takes solder reliably. So I cleaned it off, rinsed, uh, sucked all the, or extracted all the Roja solder off of it, put fresh silver solder on it. Um, let's see, I got uh, 62362 rosin core solder. Silver based, silver bearing. Bought that Radio Shack years ago. I only use it for special occasions. Uh, anyway, I got the caliper working. I needed the caliper to measure what size uh, what size that little aluminum piece is right there. Three points, I think a 3.675. Let me see. Just measure it again. 3.68. 3.68. Okay. Now I'm going to zero that and measure the center of this. So that's the difference for size. I got to go up in size on that hole this much. Just so happens. <laughs> Drill bit. This is where it super gets scary. You just thought it was scary before us. This is where you got to be not trying to push it like I did a while ago. Uh, sometimes you got to back off. I'm just real hyper. I jump around. As you probably notice it. If y'all stick stuck with me this far in these videos, you know how I am. Uh, I am mellowing out in my old age. But anyway, I've got to drill out very carefully, mind you center of that hole where it will accept that bushing. So let's tear something up together. What the heck? I ain't torn nothing up yet today. Whoop, you're looking at the ceiling now, ain't you? How'd you like my new ceiling I made last year? Almost had this building a year. That close enough to see somebody tear up a perfectly good control? All right, here we go. Take your time. There ain't no hurry. See, wanted to bind up on me a little bit. You gotta be super careful. 
Don't you dare scratch that substrate. Try it again. Can you see? Barely. I think I did it. The low meter almost sang out. Oh boy, look at that. Macrovision. There we go. Okay, let's see if this fits. Oh, no wonder I can't see close up. I've got my wrong glasses on. Ah, lay. Buy me books, send me to school, and all I do is eat the cover. Okay, there is still a little difference of size here. Uh, so what do I want to do about it? That's a good question. Let's see how much difference we got here. I just don't want to get too carried away here. Want three six seven. What this thing's measured. Number three point five six. I don't want it so loose that it wallows around in here. I want it as snug as I can get it. But it's three point five six. What it measures. So. What's the difference this time in there? About 0 0.0115 inch, which is 30 mils. 0.3 mils. 0.3 millimeters. Okay. Okay, so we can do this two ways. Let's go back and measure. Let's zero this out again. Let's measure this one more time. Let's see, 9.37 millimeters for all you guys that love millimeters. This is just a little bit big. But what the hell? Nothing venture, nothing gain, right? It's just big. It's got a bigger footprint. You can see? Here we go. Let's tear up a perfectly good control. Such here be whittling on a control all damn day. There we are. A little slightly enlarged. Kind of like uh yeah, perfect fit. Yay! My happy accident. Okay, uh whew, I can breathe it a little easier now. Now the next thing that we have to do this dude. Is, let me find a pointer. Well, now we got that done. Oop, let me get that out of there. I might just glue that. Uh, we've got to take this dude right here, that element right there, and take my Dremel and get rid of all that right there because we don't want this touching this in no way, and I'll show you why shortly. So let me get set up with my Dremel. I'm glad I got my caliper working. Let me get my Dremel.
Well, there might be a problem here. I do not have the correct bit for this to hog this out properly. So I'm going to just use a round bit. I don't have the right what I need to do this with. So, we'll hog it out with this and be try to be really, 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 really careful. when you don't have the right stuff but I don't think I broke it beyond repair and just hogged out a little more than I needed to but hey I didn't brand damage it yet now I want to just measure with my own meter to make sure that the element has it doesn't have any resistance and I'll show you what I'm doing here it's a method of my madness trust me I'm pretty damn mad mad as a hatter they say Resistance there, got resistance there. Okay, no resistance. Good. So we ain't got to worry about that. So now, we got that. Oh, what do we do now? We can move some of this junk out of the way. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, clean my workbench up a little bit. I need to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get uh, get me probably some new bits and stuff for my uh, Dremel. Oh, I thought I was missing a piece off my off my caliper. I bought this at Brooks Electronics in, in Monroe. I'm sorry, in West Monroe years and years ago. They're pretty handy. I've used it for a lot of stuff. Okay, so uh, what have we got to do now? Um, we got this piece done. Now, I've got to show you something here. In this piece right here, you'll see, matter of fact, let me find the old element. Uh, this is the old piece of the control. Right there. See that little, see that little dot or hole? It has a purpose. It mates, well, let me see, turn this stupid thing around, Sam. It mates with that little dude right there. We got to duplicate that now. So we go from one thing to the other, right? So what I've done on one of these old ones, I just tore the resistive element off. I'm going to put it up against this dude right here. Reach over here and grab me a marker. I'm going to reach through that hole and I'm going to just make a little dot, I think. Yep. Now I know where to make my dot, make and drill my hole. So now, very, 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 very carefully, very, very carefully, did I say that already? I've got to try. See if I can make my Dremel work with this. I need to get some uh, collets for my Dremel to go down to a smaller drill bit sizes. So I'm going to try very, 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 very carefully my finger in the way so I'll make sure I'll be very careful. Can y'all see what I'm doing? I'm just trying to put a little hole in there. Ooh, 
that just scared the crap out of me. Give a sh I don't give a crap how careful you are. At least me. I don't think I ever got a straight line in it. How the heck did it get that far off? I don't know. You know what? I'm tempted to just bend that damn thing out of the way and not worry about it. This is what I want to do. It wants to start moving around, I'll just glue it. Yeah, I'll just glue the stupid thing. So now I guess the problem, oh, that fits really good. Now, we well, got it. Yeah. Starting to come together again. Problem that I had last time. Oh, let me see. Uh, what do we want to do, guys? I think put this section back together. Because we're going to need this section. We're going to need that section. we got to put this section back together. No, I'm forgetting something. I had that think, I have that thought in my head. I'm like, oh, I am forgetting something. This one checked good. I, I don't think I'm going to mess with it. I'm thinking the tapers are the same. We'll check it. If we have to, we'll take it back apart. So you know what that means. It's going to break something. So the next thing is uh, where is all my stuff? Still thinking I ought to take me a little bit of super glue and put in there. Glue that stuff down. Let's see. So far so good. The next step is going to be these uh, these uh, mounting slots on the side of this, where the two mate together. So, I've got to push all this stuff back apart. Let me show you what you're going to run into if you ever decided you want to tackle that. See this ear? That ear right there. You got a tab, a locating tab here, a locating tab there, and then you got this. Same thing on the other side. You got that right there. So, you got a tab, locating tab, this. Well, problem is. This is the old one. 
see it's got the locators for the mounting tab, mounting tab, and that's the other section right there. Same thing on the side. Plus this tab up here. That got a deficit of tabs. It's got a little bitty tab there, but we're going to have to take a file. Man, I need a Dremel bit. And take, cut a little notch in there, cut a little notch in there, and cut a little notch in there. So this stupid thing can fit inside that. So, that's next. That's boring. Boring is watching what grass grows, so if I can figure out a way to do this, come back. Okay. I get done with this, I'm gonna need a drink. I can tell you that. There. It's almost done. I didn't have none of my files and stuff that like I did at my work. I just used a Dremel. I cut them as close as I could. I didn't want to take too much out because there's a little, really low clearance besides that resistance uh, element right there and the edges where the tabs go, metal tabs go through. So, trying to keep my distance away from there. But I think I got that. I think it's done. Good enough, I'm thinking. Looking over everything. Make sure everything is going to be kosher. There is a piece missing. So, let's see. Pretty snug fit, so I'm just going to leave it alone. I don't think... You know, all we got to do now is take this section here. Yeah, let's see. I'm missing that part should go in here like that. So I guess what we need to do now is take this section here and solder we got to solder the uh, center of ring uh, connection to it this dude so I'm going to go back to my silver solder because it gives me a little more strength problem I'm having now is this one I'm not I can't get to this inside like I can I did on the other one where that centerpiece is I'm just going to solder this okay now I'm going to solder this oh hang on the wrong side I got to do I got to flatten this piece out <sighs> Let's get a little closer. Let's uh, see, a little too damn close. Can't see that worth the crap, can you? This little piece right here, that's what... That right there, just a little, uh, can I, a little fork, I'm going to call it a fork. Uh, that was what was on the old control, they took the center uh, uh, connection, you know, the, uh, that where you saw you lead to, took that center connection and applied it with these fingers across that ring on the uh, on the wiper that moved around as you turned the shaft. That we have to have this has a little tab on it. Oh, there we go. Has that little tab on it. If you'll see it right there at the end. I've got to flatten that tab out, and I'm just going to take that new. I'm going to solder it right there. Probably need to cut that off. I think I cut that off on the other one. So I'm going to cut that off. Alright. So it's got to stick up if you can even see what I'm doing. I think I'm going to get my panel vise for this. Make it as stable as possible. That looks like. That looks cool. Put you on the pan of ice there. There you go. Turn the said pan of ice around. You 
it's getting warm outside here. I'm not going to mess with this much longer. I looked on my video analytics and I see where the average person watches my channel for seven minutes. And I guess at the end of that seven minutes they decide that's boring as crap, they're going to move on. I'm sorry. If this is boring to you, I apologize. But if you go and do this mess yourself, you're going to run into the same thing. You're going to run into these little issues and stuff. You're trying to make stuff made back in the 60s or whatever work. And it's just stuff you've got to do. You know, jury rig, make the best of what you got. Like I said, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. But if you just want to sit down and watch what another average everyday dude goes through to work on this stuff, however, I have worked in electronics for a long time. Can y'all see? Yeah. It takes a little trial and error to get this thing positioned correctly. Just about there. I'd like to add a little bit more solder to this if I can. I'm trying to figure out a way to push down on it and solder at the same time. And it retained heat and I didn't realize it. Dang it. And I had it perfect too. Well, that's the other thing. You got to get this stupid thing centered best you can. It's only 3,000 degrees. If you don't get it centered, it ain't going to work right. Y'all see? It's not quite right. If I had a small enough screw, I could put a screw in this thing. I'm going to apply a little more solder to this. To increase the mechanical bond, it's not the most. But I don't think it's going to be a problem in the next 15 years and in 15 years. And that's almost there. This is just very tedious. And that looks, that looks pretty close. And it looks soldered right. Something you have to do because the old, uh, that wiper that's on here is not compatible with the wiper that comes with uh, the new control. Matter of fact, all you're using on the new control is a resistive element. All that came apart because I heated it and now it expanded. Now I lost. Just what happens, bud? Just what happens? You went somewhere. That little phenolic spacer. Uh, all right, back where I was.
it's a tedious little process, guys. I ain't kidding you. If you're bored, I'm sorry. If you get a low attention span, well, sorry about that too. So do I. But I still do this stuff. I think I'm going to add a little super glue to the ring. Just to hold it in place, because I think I'm done with that part of the project. So, I'm just going to pull this back out. Add just a little bit of super glue to this thing. Never really been a fan of super glue. An epoxy guy myself, but to get this wiped, this clean, and get some of that off here. I don't need a whole lot to do this. Honestly, I said I was going to take a small tap and straighten this out. You know, I mean, chisel that, switch that back in. But honestly, I'm afraid to get in there and do anything because I don't want to break this control. Because I still have that other new control I was going to put on here, but that this seemed like it was working. All right, where's this finale? I think this thing is ready to go together. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. This goes over here like that. There's my handiwork. Looks pretty straight. So, let's see. Here we go. That's got to go in there like that. And we take the wiper right here. Yep, I'm going to clean it with my fingers. I ain't going to do anything to it. I'm going to leave that little bit of residual of what I feel on there. A little bit of lubrication probably. All right. Making sure where the uh, end is. It should be right there. Okay. remember where this was exactly which direction it was pointing. I think it goes like that.
I think it is. Oh, this stuff will drive you drinking, guys. Really. Since I don't own a spanner wrench. Tighten this down with a pair of pliers. That's how I got it off. That's how it's going to go back on. This is not how that other one was made. I kind of like this one a little bit better. A little bit easier. Yep, ain't nothing easy about this stuff. If you guys can reach in y'all's pocket and pull one out of y'all's pocket, so much for you. Feels more like a control. Looks like one too. Alright, let's see if we can get it together and then the on off section actually works. Turn it minimum to max uh, counterclockwise. I don't think I have it, the uh, switch contact on properly. This is where I've run into trouble before trying to straighten this thing out. And it snapped on me. If you start messing around with it too damn much, you're going to pay the price. See if that makes a difference. I'm going to have to probably take that back out, that actuator back out. Don't feel right. Feel right. You should turn it counterclockwise, it should turn it off. Yeah, I got it. Well, if I was putting a distributor on a vehicle, this thing would have been 180 degrees off. Should have marked it, or at least took a picture of it. I guess I could go back in the video and look. goes either one way or the other. No big deal. Take the little nut off, pull it off, turn it around, put it back together. Big deal. Mm. Kind of looks right. Let's see what happens here. Try again. Stomach says it's a little past lunchtime, probably a whole lot past lunchtime. See if it'll work this time. Oh, yeah, almost ready. Put it back together. I've got to bend that tab back, which I don't really want to do, but I don't have much choice. 
we get past this and it works, do your we got it. Oh yeah, there's that heater. A noisy little heater, isn't it? But I got enough insulation in this building that it doesn't really. 1500 watt uh, the plug in heater does actually a pretty good job. I built this building, make sure I insulated it. Okay, clicks, turns. I don't feel it buying or nothing like that, so let's see if it still works. You know, I'm hoping it does, and I hope both sides of it work. Well, A, I main thing is I'm starving. I ate a late breakfast. We're going to check it again. Would y'all like the look of the ohmmeter? Instead of me turning the stupid buttons. So much glare, 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 glare. All right, here we go. That's the first one. This is the original. Um, should be at maximum resistance right there. And uh, let's see. There we go. There's maximum resistance. Slowly turning it down. And it goes to zero. Yay! Now let's see if the new one does. Back it back out. Turning it down, it didn't have a little. <laughs> so let's see, I'm going to see if this is the right taper. So I'm going to here. Let's see. From there to there drops to about seven, seven and a half. See all my neighbors getting out there mowing the yards and mess. I guess I ought to do it too. This one behavior is different. As you can see, as I turn it, it goes from one meg, goes down very easy, and it speeds up as I get to the end. That's your audio taper for you. See, I don't know if a tone controls an audio taper. I wouldn't think it would be because it's not adjusted. I think it's probably going to be a linear taper. We'll do it. I'll try it. I think it's a linear taper. Oh, well. I don't know. As we turn it, it is a little bit higher in resistance than the new pot. I don't know, it's probably the same. Okay. Where are you? They're not exactly the same. Should I change both at the same time? Because you know, dang, I knew damn well they wasn't going to be identical. It's just not hard to take them apart. I just don't want to go through that same thing with that second control. So. I'm going to stop the video, give me something to eat, regroup, think about this. Uh, I need to look at that linear more closely. And my battery's going dead in.
So anyway, whatever. What the hell. Talk to you later. Well, alright. I've had my lunch. Thought about regrouping. And, uh... <clears throat> this control looks great. It actually works. Both new and old, however. Made a mistake. Didn't really think about being the two are completely degenerations apart and vastly different in response. It is tone control, not a volume control. Uh, I should have changed both. Should have changed both. They both work. They do their thing, but I should change both. Uh, so I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take it apart again. Put the other one in there. At least I'll have two new controls, audio taper, and um, that responds the same way. I'm going to do that, get this all set up, and uh, I'm not going to record a second half of it because I wasted a lot of time on the first one. Hopefully I can edit a bunch of that crap out of it. But needless to say, I did a tactical error. Go figure. I should have changed both these while I had it apart instead of just one. So, I'm going to put the other one in the front if I can get this back apart safely. And uh, and I'll bring you back when I got it done and we'll check it and put it back in the radio, see how the radio likes it, and call it a day. Uh, Alright, see you there. Bye. Hey, back. Actually, this was not as bad to get this apart. Um, I've already got it taken apart and. Uh, Uncontrary to how the um, the other pot came apart, this one was ridiculously simple. I mean, there's the shaft. Okay, shaft. Of course, you know. There's the uh, there's the uh, there's the mounting shaft right there. This is the adjusting shaft right here. As you can see and then of course you had this piece here which goes into here like that and then this piece goes through here like that okay and then you got a nut that goes on this side that secures all this stuff together so it's got a flange on the end of that if you can see it that little flange right there so that flange is what holds all this in together. Okay, well, next thing is you have your wiper section. Well, really not much to it. Wiper. Let's see if I can drop it and tear it up. Fumble my fingers, I can't stand that clumsy as I am. Who made me that way? Uh, okay, I uh, I put marks on here. By the way, if you look real careful, you see that little uh, that little uh, marker, uh, just a black you know perma pen. Just put a marker on it for reference on how to put this thing back together. Because if you don't, nothing's gonna work right. And then on here, it's hard to see. There's a mark in there somewhere. Anyway, that mark corresponds to this mark. So now I know how it goes back together. So anyway, that's slotted as you can see, and so is that. If you've ever worked on a car and took a distributor off, changed the distributor cap, and all the rotor and all that, kind of the same thing. Kind of looks like that. Anyway, got that on there. Next thing is this little piece. This is the stop. I've got it marked too. With the, everything's marked. You may or may not see. Everything has a reference mark. And then, the great part about that is, the other one did not have it. The other one was pressed in. This has got a little nut. A little nut. Threads in it. Hollow tube. That. Just 
just screws in to that shaft there. Secures it. Can't beat that. Now that screws all the way in. When it does, it has some more threads that sticks out that the other wafer on the second pot connects to. That is how that should be done. It took me about a minute and a half to take this pot apart. Just a pot apart. Minute and a half. Anyway, take all this back apart. The nice thing about this one is, if it's like the other one, I didn't have—I don't have to drill out that center piece. So, all that being said, I've got this guy. Nothing wrong with this guy. It just ain't the same as this guy. You know, that's what's wrong with the world. If it ain't the same as somebody else, then something's wrong with you. You know, that's what's wrong with this world. A lot wrong with this world. Turning from Christianity, turning from Christianity is the biggest thing. There's no values anymore. Kids are not taught values, the respect, the meaning of life. There's that wonderful, loud heater of mine. Get springtime, we'll have an air conditioner to listen to. We'll probably just have the door open. Alright, same old thing. Take the cover off, big deal. Remember that? Take my old pair of side cutters here and I'll squeeze in them little ears. They'll probably just cut off. Got to take them off. They're flared. So, if you don't take them off, then you'll never get this thing apart. Alright, now I got to go here and get the socket set. Hey, a little hammer to extract this thing. Not a big deal. I just take a little deep wall socket right here. Take this portion here, slide it in there. Got room to move around. Let me get my. All right. Still have my punches. So I'm going to punch this thing out. Voila! A lot easier than the last time. Gotta have the right tools. Well, look at there. Don't ever throw this stuff away, guys. You never know when you'll need it. If you find your electronic junk box, put that kind of stuff, all them leftover control parts that you took apart from the new ones, and all, even the old ones. Save them. Don't get rid of them. You never know. Alright, so there we are. There's the resistance element that we want to transplant. Alrighty. So this is going to be the same routine. Um, we've got to take this uh, you got to take this section off right here, this little spring loaded contact. That's what connects to the wiper. This, uh, this center pin of this control, if you can see it. That center pin of that control is connected to this wiper through a little rivet. So you remember we had to drill that out on the other piece. Uh, so we do the same thing on this. Drill that out so we can get we can get the little spring contact. We gotta have that. Okay, and we're gonna take this little dude right here and we're gonna take the Dremel and cut off the connection to this right here. Because this ring here, this inner ring here is not compatible with the wiper that's on this old pot. So we had to cut that off and put this other this little uh, spring contact on this one and solder it on like we did the other one. So uh, what I did before, let's, see, let's go ahead and take, don't get too carried away here. Great control, but but oh well. Alright, let's see if we can get it off here. Here I go.
Famous last words. That drill bit is duller than my hind leg. I don't know about y'all, but I can't seem to keep good drill bits. So I'm just going to take the drill and cut it off. You don't watch me. I don't want to watch your action. I know. Here we go. Don't have my safety glasses on. Remember, guys, where are your TPEs? You're like Norm Avon said on all the Andy workshops. Should just pop out. It does. Look at there. Look at there. Already done that quick. Boom. Boom. Keep, like I said, keep these pieces and parts. You never know when they come in handy. Just get you a little uh, parts bin. Try to get a good parts bin. Don't get you a little piece of junk crap from the dollar store. Get some good parts bins. It's got some stability to it. And uh, you'll be fine. All right, now you know what we got to do next. We got to do a little surgery on this guy. Um, see if we can get y'all a little closer, get y'all a little zoomed in there. Yeah, man, I'm gonna be getting good at this. Whether y'all see me or not, that's a different story. Just gonna use a little cut off wheel on the Dremel very, very carefully. Let me get my glasses. Cut that center ring loose. So I don't have to worry about it. If you don't cut it loose, it's going to short out. Pull this. Don't take much. It really does. Give me a brush. Clean up. You gotta keep that pot clean or it's gonna give you troubles. Alright, where you at? There you are. There you go. That's all you gotta do. Okay. Got that done. I'm cooking with peanut oil now. Let me get my pen of ice. I love my pen of ice. Best thing my wife didn't know she bought me. Put this thing in a pan of ice right here. Matter of fact, before I do that, let's go ahead and make. Let's let's tell you, let's back up a second here. Let's go ahead and zoom you guys out so you can see what the hell I'm doing here. You pointer. You got to remember, we got to widen these notches right here. So we got to do that. Got to do that. Let's see, where is the old pot? Yep, right there. Turns out the outer uh, index uh, index holes in this thing are the same. They actually line up. I lucked out when I ordered this stuff from Mouser. So, I'll try to close this. I'm going to use this as a, as a guide. Oh boy, y'all can't see y'all. I'm like, y'all hear me running my big mouth and can't see what the crap I'm doing. I was going to use this as a guide, but I don't know if I want to. This thing perfectly lined up somehow or another. I don't know if I can do that and be careful of that resistive element, so I guess I'm just going to do it like I did the last one, which I didn't show that on camera. I'm just going to kind of pinch it together and hold it with my hands and hope for the best. Yeah. 
Hey, what I want to do, I'm going to do a little different. I'm just going to put that ferrule through there. And I'm going to take this nut. I want to like to hold this together. Give me a kind of a... Give me a a guide that I can get a little more precise than I did the last one. The last one was like somebody... Uh, like a drunk... <clears throat> I don't know, drunk somebody got a hold of it. Promise I ain't drunk, but used to like drinking a little bit. I mean I didn't drink like an idiot or nothing like that, but I like I like to get buzz every now and then. Now I'm getting age now that I'm at the age now where alcohol don't do good things to me. Alright, now that I've got this done, I have a little template here. Really don't like tightening that up in there. Find something to protect this this thing with. I had something a while ago. What did I do with it? Threw it away. Stand by. I'm kind of one of them guys that bores the hell out of people first thing but anyway I'm one of them guys that likes to uh, I'm kind of like MacGyver of course I hate the term MacGyver something I don't MacGyver something now I got it in the fixture now you can see uh, get you a little closer I'm gonna just uh, take my Dremel don't have no PPE on I'm gonna turn this thing to where I can get to it and then I'm going to use the old ridges as a guide. I think I need to do that. <laughs> I didn't have to do that. I got carried away. Oh well. We'll do the other side. I was thinking it was like the other one. I didn't look. Can y'all still see? Hell no. Well, y'all keep moving. Notice I ain't got my PPE on. PPE, personal protective equipment. I think that's gonna work. One thing is, when you do stuff like this, you gotta be careful. Don't cut into that substrate. I almost got it. I missed it by hair. You get it too close and you're going to have a short circuit type issue because it's going to get too close and depending on the of course where this is at there's the high voltage is not really there because there's a capacitor that isolates it and all this stuff but you really keep you got to keep this stuff got to keep the clearance man yes sir -y. all right before we get too carried away, let's see if this is going to fit. Voila. First time. Wow. I can't believe it. Alright, now that we got that, you know what's next, right? Solder that, uh, solder that contact on. Always reminds me of the Reliant. This one of ours, Admiral. It's Reliant. I know, a lot of Star Trek.
Yeah, I remember Star Trek The Motion Picture came out. Uh, I was so excited, just like all the other Trekkies in the world. You know, of course, I used to, I used to, uh, I had a subscription to Starlog Magazine, so every every month, um, I would get uh, an issue of Starlog Magazine, and I would keep track of what's going on in the production of Star Trek and the movie pictures and all that, and it was exciting. I couldn't wait to see. They had some artist renderings of what the ship was going to look like, stuff like that, but the Enterprise, though, when it was revealed, it was a beautiful, beautiful spaceship. I'm glad that they didn't redesign it stupid, kind of like <coughs> Discovery <coughs> did. Of course, Discovery turned out to be a shithole of a movie, pardon my French. But it not a movie, I'm sorry. Shithole of an Enterprise, I mean, uh, Star Trek. Kind of like the J.J. Abrams Star Trek. Some of you people probably swear by it, but I swear at it. Stupid. And stupid, this crap that they did to the characters. I mean, and you had that idiot alien uh, antagonist, Nero. I mean, come on. That's one of the most worst movie villains there ever was. But then they had to blow up Vulcan. You ain't never seen a movie, you ain't missed a damn thing. They had a plot device called Blow Up Vulcan, so it'll make drama. Of course, the writers of that show was, uh, the writers of that show, not really, the somebody that I would want write in my shows. People like DC Montana and uh, David Gerald and all them that wrote the original episodes. There ain't nobody like that in Hollywood anymore. All you got now is people that are trying to impress, imprint their ideological, their, uh, they're trying to imprint their, uh, the way they think on you instead of just trying to tell a freaking story. And that's the way Hollywood is nowadays. Hollywood's a joke compared to what it used to be. There's no, there's no Henry Fonda's, no, I believe I've got this thing too hot, guys. There's no Henry Fonda's, there's, uh, no Jimmy Stewart's. I love Henry Fonda and Jimmy Stewart. Two of my, two of my favorite actors. There is nothing like that in Hollywood now. Nope, nobody like that in Hollywood anymore. Hollywood is, uh... Hollywood is a, uh... There I go, running from my... Hollywood's a joke. I gotta turn that radio off, guys. I'll be right back. Bad enough with that heater to listen to these people on this radio. Yak, yak, yak. Not quite the solder joint I want. It's a little dull looking. I'm gonna try to put a little bit more solder on it. Again, I'm using a little bit of silver solder. I think it just gives it a little bit more. A little bit more strength.
This is where your pain the body is right here. Trying to line that up and keep it still and keep it from moving. What I'm trying to do now is just set it down where it needs to be, center it. I either push too much, I don't push enough. I think I got it. The only thing about when you do this to these pots is you can't put it going there when you solder this thing in play is go in there and put a whole lot of heat on that pin. You need to get your wire pushed through the lug and you need to get in there, do your thing, get out quick. You will unsolder this if you're not careful. Clean some of this flux off here. So you don't There. Yep, it's a little tough. There you go. There's the new one. Ready to roll. So if it's ready to roll, I'm ready to roll. So everybody's ready to roll. Uh, what am I forgetting? Let's see. Oh yeah, I know what I'm forgetting. I forgot all about that. All right, I knew things were going too good. You see that inside there? Get my get a little. There we go. See them little slots? Got to do that. I didn't think about it. I'm so happy that I was getting this done. I don't have a way to fix that. What that does is it cures that pot, that uh, cures that phenolic board there that's got the uh, resistive elements that keeps it in place, keeps it from moving. Also, I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm a guinea pig here. You know, in the interest of time, in the interest of my sanity, and because I don't have the correct, quite the correct tools, I am going to not use these pads. I'm actually going to, I'm going to use a little uh, crazy glue. Great, glue them down. Yeah, once I tighten it up, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Because so I don't feel like I want to get this done. I just want to get it done. First thing we're going to do is lose you guys again. Hmm. Let's put this over here where we're going to see. You all see now? Yep. I'm just going to whittle this down a little bit. This is a pretty tough to do. Cutting them tabs off, guys. That's all I'm doing because I'm just going to use some glue, glue this thing back together. Uh, Y'all can do the right way and go in there and get some little small triangular files, a little big ones. That's what I did on the last one, but I don't like doing that with them. I want to get this project done. I want to get this back in the radio. See if it even works. See how well it works.
see how well it works and uh, be on my way got that done so let's see here all right let's see so that goes in like that be a little interference issue here. I don't recall having that issue, that problem. Okay, what I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't I think it's going to be fun. You know, ain't nothing a hammer won't fix, right? So, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to have this piece and this piece. Where's that barrel? It ain't going nowhere. I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm not even gonna glue it down. That's what it looks like in the middle of that ferrule. Okay? It ain't going anywhere. If it goes somewhere, we'll use some glue then, but hey, man's gotta do what a man's gotta do, and you don't wanna take six hours to do it, right? Which I think this is how long this video is probably gonna be. Now, I will tell you something about these controls and something I learned recently and I didn't I wasn't aware of it. What well, they use a grease uh what do they call that stuff? I oh, asked me, I could have told you. You never notice how when you turn a control, even when they're brand new, they have a little bit of resistance. Well, there's a certain kind of grease that you use, and it's called resistance and grease. How about that? Resistance grease. Uh, I haven't bought any yet. I want to because if you go in there and you spray this pot or you take a pot apart and just clean the crap out of it and put it back together, uh, it's not going to feel the same. I mean, if you take the shafts out and clean all that out of there, it's not going to feel the same. And the reason why is that resistance grease is what gives it that little bit of resistance so when you turn it, it feels natural. Without grease in here and this thing turns free, two things. It's not going to feel natural and B, you're going to probably break the control because you don't realize you're turning it and you're just going to use a lot of energy to go around to the stop. And so, resistance grease. I don't know where you get it. I've been meaning to buy some for months now and I just can't ever think about it. Matter of fact, if you look on this shaft right here, you see that little bit of stuff right there? That's what's, that's enough to give resistance. I'm not taking that off. It's not hurting nothing. Matter of fact, you can't see it. That's actually just trash air. But on the shaft here, a little bit of sticky. I'm going to leave it on there. Because that's going to be my resistance grease. It gives that little smooth feeling that I like. All right, let's get this stupid thing back together so we can go on about our lives, right? Where's the other half? Let's see, there's that one. Gotta find all my stuff. That's the top one. Um, where are you? Are you the one I'm looking for? Yep. Well, that one goes in there. Remember, I have it marked. Alright, then another piece, uh, which I think is this one. I just used a little black marker, so everything's going together so far. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I don't know what it is yet. Alright. 
then this piece that screws on relatively easy yeah, I like it now I'm going to take my pliers right here on this spline shaft right here I'm just going to take very carefully not a whole lot of pressure just need a little backing up here clamp it not going to clamp it too hard just enough to hold it I can reach in here with a pair of pliers and turn that little nut ferrule thing and snug it down it ain't going nowhere especially when you ain't going to it ain't like you going to be turning that tone control 300 times a minute look at there done all right now I got that done let's just leave this here now the next piece is we've got to put clamshell back on which just goes over the fence you know big deal is kind of self-explanatory quite honestly I mean like I said if you don't understand what's going on you don't need to be messing on this stuff take a pair of pliers and very carefully real slow in these tabs in. You don't like being moved fast. Give them time to stretch and bend. If you don't, they're going to break. Then you'll be up the creek. You're going to be up the creek without your Charmin. You know what I mean, Vern? Make sure everything's working on the camera there. Alright, that control is now intact. Before we go putting it all back together, let's see how it works. So I'm just going to lace it up in my little pen of ice that my wife didn't know she bought me a couple of years ago, a year ago. Pen of ice is your friend. Alright, uh, who got my clip leads? I think I bumped you guys, didn't I? Nope. I'm going to move you anyway. Let's get over here. Now, we're just going to watch the meter. We don't need to watch the control. You know what a heck it, somebody's turning a control looks like. Get my trusty, dusty old PTVM, which, which stands for what? Kitties? Vacuum to voltmeter. It's a voltmeter that uses vacuum tubes. Go figure. Get my little clip leads a whole of it. And I'm already set up for R times 100,000, which is fine. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. We're gonna put this on the center. And then we're just gonna test the control and make sure it still works and ain't got no bubbles or I mean, hiccups or anything like that. So we're gonna test one side or the other. Alright, we're turning it up, got about one meg, turning it down, it's really smooth, as you, as you can see, it goes down, and it goes to zero, yoo-hoo! We'll do the other side, it should be one meg as well, it is, turning the control back the other way, and you see that it adjusts and goes down, woohoo! I think we have a success there, guys, it works! Oh, and the other test. Let's just make sure that we ain't got some kind of goofy leakage to the shield case, which you don't. Don't want that. Bad things will happen. Some strange stuff like, what in the crap is going on here? All the, all the resistive elements inside the uh, volume control are supposed to stay isolated. Ah. Alright, so now that we've got that done, ready to put this stupid thing back together put it back in the radio get this radio back active and let's see what it does get this out of the way alright okay we got that part there we got that part we got that part what am I missing here oh missing this good stuff here gotta have all this stuff Little bitty, little bitty washer. Little bitty washer. 
zooming in so we can watch the assembly like watching grass grow you see I'm trying to figure out where my bound areas are as long as I'm straight here I guess it's fine so what do we need to do next um, this needs to go on next so we'll go on there okay can you see this little old bitty washer I hope I don't drop it did drop it thought I did yeah, this little bitty washer right here goes on the shaft next I think it's just a spacer I think it's not really does anything else all right, so the next thing is, see, and of course I didn't mark it. I know where the stop is, so I can just put it on there like I feel fit. Remember, this thing is all slotted and grooved and all that horse stuff. Okay, got that done. Put this on. I remember it being the opposite way. What I thought. All right, time to put it together. Still see? Yeah, here we go. I didn't lose y'all too much, did I? Tighten it down. You really need a spanner wrench for this, but oh well. to finish the installation let's go and put it together just briefly um, no, I'm missing here I ain't sure how I kept all that but oh well gotta bend these tabs back out without doing too much damage gotta have a little room to maneuver here I'm just going to temporarily put this thing back together and make sure that the on off switch does its thing. We don't want to put all this thing back together, put it back in the radio and realize the stupid on off switch in the wrong spot. So, I can't get these tabs to behave. There we go. Oop, backwards. Y'all still in frame? Y'all all right. All right, let's see if it turns on and off. Yep, it does. So let's finish putting it together. Got that side. Just gotta push it firmly. Yep, push it firmly. This is where I run into trouble on the other one before. I didn't like being pushed too damn firm. There we go. Almost done. Of course, some dumbass didn't tighten us down. Scared me. I thought something broke. All right. I'm going to just kind of gently, yeah, gently knock them tabs down. I know you can't see, but this stuff ought to be fairly self explanatory. All right. There it is. Complete. Let's test it. Now the two sides, even though it may not quite act like it was designed to do. Where's that meter? There we are. Get a little bit better here. So y'all can be front row Joes on here. I'll zoom you in a little tad. There you go. All right, let's get the meter out. Leads out. Come on in. Put the control in there. No, I'm not going to. Too much trouble. 
put the meter and the leads in the same picture. I guess I should do that for my adoring public, but um, y'all, I can tell you, is I'm turning the control and watching the on meter, which is the main thing. So we're going to do the first one that we did first. I'm just clipping the one through the center to one of the leads, either side. And then, all right, there we go. I'm going to turn it. Going up, going up, going up. There's one mag. Turning it back down. Very smooth. does its thing. I'm going to go to the opposite side, from center to the opposite side. And it should be one mag. And as I turn it the opposite way, I'm just making sure that it operates properly. It does. Okay, let's check the new one. See if the new one works. Same thing. Maximum open. Turning it down. And it turns down. Goes all the way to zero, which is what I want. We'll go to the other side. Should read a meg. And now we're going to turn it back where it came from. And it goes down. Look at there. Final check is I'm going to check it electrically these connections to make sure that I don't have any leakage and I don't okay Ooh, dog slow down guys all right we have a tone control intact working it may not be the same specs as the taper goes but I think it'll work just fine it might take a little getting used to but it might work fine so I guess now I'm going to clean my bench up, put all my tools up and all this stuff, and then we'll get the radio back out. Uh, I'll install it because all it is is a bunch of solder and turning some screws and stuff and not no big deal. Uh, so I will bring you back when I get the radio together and let's see if it even works. All right. See you there. Okay, guys. I got the, uh, I got the tone control back in radio uh, all wired in. Um, no casualties and also did something else hang on yep hang on hang on your britches remember these three resistors from the last video in the discriminator circuit this that 2000 ohms and that 100 and i was sitting it's kind of jack legged them in there i was doing that for test i told you i'd replace them i gotta cut that lead there but i replaced them with new replacements i didn't have the same one as carbon comp like these other two I'd use this this wire right here. It's uh metalized. But anyway, got all that done. I'm getting ready to hook it all up, but I just wanted to show that to you before we do anything else. So be right back. Okay. Here we are. Let's see if we can uh do this little ouch. Do this segment without getting in uh, trouble with the uh, YouTube uh, police. So that's plugged in. I got it plugged into the isolation transformer as usual. Here we go. Ooh, I'm drawing current. That means the uh, switch work. I've got it set. Uh, about halfway. Ooh. Look at there. Works. Bancorp South, proud partner of the Warhawks. Visit BancorpSouth.com to find a branch near you. Warhawks fall to uh, 10 and 10 yeah. overall, 2 and 6. Inside the Sunbelt Conference, South Alabama improves to 14 and 5. And now four and two inside the Sun Belt Conference. Going to name our player of the game brought to you by Ticket Smarter today. It was uh, Andre Jones, 13 points, five boards, five assists for Andre in uh, nearly 34 minutes. As he is the player of the game brought to you by Ticket Smarter. Jags, after being down by two at the intermission, outscored the Warhawks by 14 in the second half, 68. 
to 56. They get the victory on the road. We'll take a two-minute break, come back, and take a look at our final stats. You're listening to Warhawk Basketball, presented by Bud Light on the Warhawk Radio Network from Learfield. Yeah, I went ahead and took that other cap out that I put in there, too, the other day. thought it might have made a difference, but it didn't, actually. I was kind of... I thought it did, but it didn't. But anyway, it is working. Uh, the tone control was a success, that finally. Um, everything's working on it now. I just need to put a safety cap in the AC line there. And get the neon controls for the, uh, I mean the neon bulbs for the uh, pilot indicator and the stereo indicator. Get that done and uh, just redo the case. So. I think I'm good now. The rest of this stuff will uh, probably be a video later on when I get the case done. But I think this is it for this one. Uh, thank you guys for riding along. All this other little stuff that i got to do to this is crackers. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for riding along. And uh, it is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a complete working radio. And um, when I get uh, when I get the uh, two neon bulbs and the uh, safety cap in there, we'll, I'll install them make sure it all works again do another closing video of this and then the next thing whenever I get around to it which who knows when uh, I'll put uh, maybe the heat of summer when it's too damn hot to get out I don't know but we'll fix the case uh, and uh, this thing will be good to go anyway uh, if nothing else happens one video to go so thank y'all and y'all have a good day bye